It seems like everyone and their brother has something to say about the benefits of turmeric. But I want to come at it from a different angle. I want to talk about the more esoteric benefits of turmeric that people aren't necessarily highlighting. Now, I'll overlap some of the more common things, but I want to talk about things like autophagy and things like uh, mitochondrial biogenesis and a little bit of the inflammation modulating effects, but come at it from a different perspective. Now, make no mistake, I am not trying to have this misconstrued for medical advice. I'm not saying that turmeric is better than any kind of you know, pharmaceutical. As a matter of fact, I consider them in different buckets. It's comparing apples to oranges, okay? So anyhow, let's go ahead and jump in. So today's video sponsor is 4505, which you might know know of because I've talked about them before in terms of their humanely raised pork when it comes down to pork rinds, but now they have some really cool new product. So these are called the 4505 Butcher Snacks. Okay, these are awesome. They're little like sausage links, like pork links, like little like pork sticks that you can carry with you. They have three different flavors. They have original, they have red hot, which tastes kind of like a, uh, almost like something you'd get at a barbecue restaurant. Kind of tastes like a, like a hot link. It's pretty awesome. Then they have a cheddar and bacon flavor. Now the neat thing about 4505 is they're all about humanely raised pork. They are the first of their kind in the pork stick category to use humanely raised pork. No hormones, no antibiotics, completely humanely raised. So they're available at Sprouts, they're available at Whole Foods coming here soon nationwide, and they're also available on Amazon. So I put a special link down below. So if you're on the go and you're doing keto, you're fasting, you're doing anything like that, you've gotta check them out. So that link down below will save you a couple of bucks if you wanna try them out and try out 4505's brand new butcher snacks. They are so amazing and they taste unreal. These just, anyway, you gotta try them. So that link is down below and a big thank you to 4505 for the continued support. First piece I wanna talk about is autophagy. Autophagy is your body's cellular recycling. It's where your body kinda has that survival of the fittest mechanism and it knows that when, for example, you're not eating or you're fasting, you're exercising or whatever, your body becomes very, very just efficient and utilitarian and it says okay i don't need this component of a cell so i'm sort of going to self-destruct it and consume it basically you're you're survival of the fittest you're getting the stronger cells to survive so autophagy is like a natural sort of natural selection recycling process well believe it or not turmeric has a powerful effect at inducing autophagy via two different pathways okay autophagy can be induced via what is called ampk ampk is the energy sensor within your body okay so like if you were to fast or not eat for 24 hours AMPK would elevate because it determines that, oh, there's less fuel coming in than what is being burned. So what AMPK does is it signals, okay, we need to start like pulling from body fat stores. We need to start pulling from other tissues because there's no food coming in. It's the energy sensor. Well, turmeric can activate that. So there's a study that was published in the journal Cellular Physiology that showed just that. It found that curcumin and turmeric drive up AMPK. Okay, so then we look further in what AMPK does. Well, if you look at a study that was published in the European Journal of Pharmacology, it found that when they added turmeric in, there was a reduction in beta amyloid plaque buildup because there was an increase in AMPK and a decrease in mTOR. What does that mean? Okay, well mTOR is like the pro-growth signaling. mTOR is not bad, it gets a bad rap, but mTOR is like you know pro-growth. When we're consuming protein, when we're eating, we're activating mTOR to grow, to rebuild. The opposite is autophagy. So this European journal demonstrated that yeah, by consuming turmeric, we are shutting down the mTOR phase a little bit and getting more into recycling, which is very, very good for our body in a lot of cases. But then there was a study that was published in Autophagy, the journal Autophagy, which found that turmeric activated autophagy in a way independent of AMPK. So yes, it drove up AMPK to stimulate that cellular recycling, which is great, but it also did it in its own specific, unique way. It drove autophagy via what is called lysosome biogenesis. The lysosome is where autophagy takes place in the cell to begin with. So by making the lysosome go through biogenesis, it was making more availability for autophagy to occur. The long story short, it looks like turmeric is a pretty powerful compound for increasing the level of autophagy, whether you're fasting, exercising, or just living your life. The next somewhat obscure one that people don't talk about is that turmeric has an ability to help us utilize omega-3s from plants better. There was a study that was published in Biochemica et Biophysica, and this study was interesting because it demonstrated that consuming turmeric helped increase the enzyme that is responsible for converting alpha-linolenic acid into docosahexaenoic acid. That sounds like Greek, what does that mean? When you consume things like flax, chia, plant-based like omega-3s, 
The conversion rate to a usable form of omega-3 like you would get from fish oil is like a couple percent. It's not good, okay? So you would have to eat so much flax seed to get the same amount of omega-3 that you would get in a fish oil pill because it has to go through a conversion process and only a couple percent gets converted. Well, it turns out according to this study that you increase the expression of the DHA conversion enzyme. So in this particular case, FADS2, okay? So and elongase 2 as well. So these two enzymes play a role in converting that ALA into DHA. Pretty fascinating. So if you are plant-based or you're trying to get more docosahexaenoic acid, which is the fat that's good for your brain, out of a plant-based diet, then turmeric is definitely a good route to go. Or if you're just trying to get more omega-3 availability in the first place. The next one is the brain. Okay, people don't think about the brain benefit a whole lot, but there are some interesting studies that demonstrate how turmeric can improve BDNF levels, and I'll explain what that is. There's a study that was published in the journal Neuroscience Letters. Now, this study was done in rats, but it did find that turmeric seemed to reduce the amount of BDNF that was being suppressed in rats with depression. Okay, now again, this is with rats, so take it with a grain of turmeric, right? But what BDNF is, BDNF is a protein that travels to the synapses, okay, in our brain, and it helps improve plasticity. So plasticity is your brain's ability to sort of like mold and adapt. Okay, if we don't have a lot of plasticity, then it's rigid and you're not able to adapt and form new networks and things like that. You want plasticity where things are plasticky and movable and malleable, okay? Well, that's what BDNF is responsible for. So there was a study that was published in the journal Psychopharmacology that took a look at acute and chronic intake of turmeric. They found that just one hour after consuming turmeric, there was an improvement in memory, working memory, but also just cognition, just alertness, right? And this continued on for four weeks. So even when they continue taking it, it just continued to improve for four weeks. So turmeric has a big impact when it comes down to just our ability to kind of think. And it largely has to do, or seemingly so, with this BDNF, because that plays such a critical role in, once again, our plasticity and our ability to sort of form kind of that connection that we need in our brain to build memories, to have more attention, and to feel the way we want to feel. The next one is that turmeric improves mitochondrial biogenesis. What does that mean? Mitochondria is the energy powerhouse in the cell, right? We need that to create energy. So mitochondrial biogenesis is where we are creating more mitochondria in a given area. Okay, to give you kind of insight, it, different kinds of muscles, right? You have muscles that are really dark red, okay? And then you have muscles that are not so red. Muscles that are really dark red are muscles that have lots of mitochondria packed inside of them. There's a lot more blood flow, there's a lot more nutrient delivery, there's a lot more oxygen going into that kind of muscle. That means there's a lot of mitochondria there because there's a lot of ability to produce energy. Mitochondria are little power plants. The more power plants we have, the more densely populated those power plants areas are, and we produce more energy. Well, it turns out that turmeric can drive up mitochondrial biogenesis. It can improve how much mitochondria we have, and it does this once again via that same AMPK pathway. Think about it like this for a second. If your body thinks that you are, I'm just gonna exaggerate here, if your body thinks you're starving, it's going to try to create more factories to try to create more energy. Because right now, it's like, oh no, what are we doing? We need more, we need more factories to possibly recruit as much energy as we possibly can, okay? So that happens, and turmeric is driving up AMPK, driving that up even more. So there are studies that demonstrate that turmeric in conjunction with exercise will actually improve mitochondrial biogenesis better than exercise alone. So when you exercise and go for a run, you're gonna have mitochondrial biogenesis occur because you're adapting to running. It seems as though, at least according to these studies, that if you add turmeric into the mix, it can accelerate the mitochondrial biogenesis, possibly making you adapt a little bit faster for your workouts. And now speaking of workouts, here's the other one that most people know of, but it's kind of interesting to explain the mechanism behind it. Okay, turmeric has inflammation modulation properties. Should it be used in place of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory? Not necessarily. You see, I'm kind of a unique duck when it comes down to this. Like, I feel like, you know, Western medicine, and that has a very powerful role, and it's very important. I also feel like there are Ayurvedic things that we can throw into the mix in conjunction, and adjunct to. So I'm not saying that this is better than one or the other, but I'm gonna explain how the mechanism works. Okay, when you have like stiffness or pain or anything in your joints, what happens is that triggers a flood of cytokines to that joint, okay? When those cytokines go there, that triggers the release of cyclooxygenase enzyme two, COX2. 
that can trigger some pain, okay? And that triggers the formation of what is called prostaglandin E2. Okay, these prostaglandins E2, then they drive more cytokines in it and you end up with more inflammation, okay? So what ends up happening ultimately when you have like joint pain or an injury or anything like that, the pain is you're feeling the cells secrete cyclooxygenase enzyme 2, driving up prostaglandin, driving up more inflammation and causing some pain. Well, when you take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen, you are knocking out or inhibiting cyclooxygenase enzymes, but you are knocking out both cyclooxygenase enzyme one and two, okay? Cyclooxygenase enzyme two is the one that's causing you discomfort in your joints and things like that. Cyclooxygenase enzyme one triggers uh, inflammation that's associated with like regrowth of your stomach lining and uh, blood flow to the kidneys, things that are important, platelets, all this stuff. We don't necessarily want to reduce cyclooxygenase enzyme one for long periods of time. Short amounts are totally fine. But what turmeric does is turmeric modulates cyclooxygenase enzyme two only. It's selective. It doesn't act upon cyclooxygenase enzyme one. So for a longer term strategy, turmeric works in that case because you're not suppressing COX1. No one, this is no like mystery, okay? Even ibuprofen, all those things, like they say, don't use for X amount of time or longer than X amount of time. Don't exceed this. It's not like anyone is trying to pull anything shady with that. It's just, you're not supposed to use that for a long period of time. So perhaps if you're using ibuprofen because your doctor said to use it, well, you cycle on and off of that, turmeric might be a great thing to add into the mix to potentially give you a little bit of inflammation modulation there. So it's just important to understand the mechanisms and understand like where it comes into play. Okay, so we have the inflammation modulation effect. We have BDNF in the brain. We have mitochondrial biogenesis and exercise. We have autophagy and we have omega-3 utilization and conversion of alpha linolenic acid into docosahexaenoic acid. Pretty phenomenal stuff that goes on with this stuff. And that's why it's talked about so much. It's no mystery. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.